Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on Fourier transforms. Now in previous videos we defined what the Fourier transform was. It's an integral transform, so we use this curly f or f hat to denote the transform of a suitable function f of x. And we use this uh, inverse type um, notation to denote the inverse transform that undoes the, the original transform. Okay, we computed a few of the transforms and we, um, in another video, we looked at the so-called first shifting theorem. Well, there's a first shifting theorem. Today's presentation is about the second shifting theorem of Fourier transforms. Okay, so I'm going to prove the result and I'm going to do an example. So. The second shifting theorem is important when we either want to take the Fourier transform of this kind of product or we want to take the inverse transform of this shifted function. So we've got a shift in the W uh, in this case. Okay, so um, now remember uh, Fourier transforms are important for solving differential equations. Uh, especially partial differential equations. So um, the significance of this result is linked back to so, uh, the solution method to partial differential equations. So th th this result yeah, um, um, is important because it can be applied, at least in theory, when you're solving uh, partial differential equations. Okay, so let's do a proof. I'm just going to show uh, this uh, identity here. Okay, so essentially um, the proof is just about using or applying the actual definition of that transform. Okay, and it's, it's relatively straightforward. Okay, so uh, let's put this in and transform that, and then we'll see uh, if we can come up with this. So by definition, the transform of this product is just the following. Okay, so that's my so-called kernel. I multiply it by what's in here. Okay, now if you look at this, you can actually combine those and you'll notice that There's a shift now. Okay, so what is this? Well, it's almost this, but instead of W, I've got W minus A in brackets. So that is actually just, it's not F hat of W, it's F hat of W minus A. So it's the right hand side here. Okay, so pretty easy proof. One line, two lines. Okay, and of course if star holds, then this identity holds here. What we do is you take the inverse transform of both sides. Okay, so that'll disappear and um, you'll be left with that. And over here, you're taking the inverse transform of this shifted uh, f hat. Okay? So, pretty easy, um, pretty easy proof. Now, let's actually apply the result and see if we can uh, do an example. All right, so I'm just going to hand write this one out. We're asked to compute the inverse Fourier transform of this shifted Gaussian. Okay. All right, so we essentially want to apply this second part now. So um, what we'd like to do is identify A and identify f hat. Okay, once we have a and f hat, 
we can take the inverse transform of f hat to get f of x and multiply through by this exponential involving a. Alright, so let's um, work through the example. Alright, so what would A be and what would F hat be? Well, A would be 2 and F hat of W is basically just replace the W minus 2 in brackets with W. Okay, so to apply the second shifting theorem, we want to take the inverse transform of that and then multiply through by this exponential function with a equals 2. Alright, so the, the question is what is the inverse transform of this? Well, this is a Gaussian and we know that the transforms of Gaussians are Gaussians and the inverse transforms of Gaussians are Gaussians. Okay, and I, in fact I proved that in uh, one of the introductory videos on uh, Fourier transforms. Okay, so So for our example, we want to take the inverse transform of this. Now this is just the following. Now you can, you know, I mean, you can compute that directly. It's not that uh, simple to do that. You can look it up on a table, or you can you can look at a video. Okay, so to come up with this, what we do is you take that and we multiply it through by e to the i a x with a equals 2. So thus by the SST second shifting theorem, So, this will be, okay, so A is 2 here, so let's say 2ix times f of x. Okay. So here's our um, solution. And we've computed the inverse transform. Okay, now, I d you know, it, it's reasonably algorithmic. You can see that, okay, w w once you've got this shifted uh, function of w, you identify a, you identify f hat of w, you compute the inverse transform of f hat of w, and then just multiply through by this uh, exponential function. So that's the second shifting theorem of Fourier transforms. Uh, pretty simple proof, and I did an example. Now in forthcoming uh, videos, I'll discuss more aspects of Fourier transforms and their applications. I hope you can join me for those presentations.